Hi there, my name is Liv and I make things. This week's video is brought to you by my brand new carving mat. It's pretty sick because I can scratch it up with all of my scratchy tools and it doesn't get little nicks and bumps on it the same way that my desk does. Pretty sick, if I do say so myself. When I was doing some research looking for things I wanted to sculpt for this week, I came across this post on Reddit. It's this drawing done by the Reddit user Evergreen Queen with a V instead of a U. And it's basically like a Polly Pocket meets Stardew Valley little pocket world thing that I thought was very cool. And I thought it would be really fun to make something so teeny tiny. I decided to change the design a little bit just because the layout of it ended up being a little more cramped whenever I made it into an actual physical object. And I also wanted the container itself to be a star drop because it is like star shaped. So I made it full on star drop, star drop. Generally, my problem with creating things is I'm really good at executing stuff, but I'm not really good at actually coming up with the idea. So this takes a lot of the pressure off me, which is very nice. Because of the shape of this sculpture, I don't actually need to use any tin foil like I usually start with. So I just have a ball of clay that I flatten down with this horrific transition that I had to keep in because it was so bad, it was comical. Now that I have my flat pancake of clay, I basically draw out the shape that I'm looking for. It's kind of like a star, but the bottom part of the star is pretty flat. So I drew it out lightly on the clay and then I cut it out with one of my carving knives. I rolled out another ball of clay and basically just measured the shape based on the other star that I already made. So I have two identical-ish stars. Next thing I did was roll out these super long and thin slabs of clay that would act as the walls for the star pieces. So I began attaching that to the edges of the top and the bottom of the box. I used one of my paddle tools to just kind of smoosh the pieces together and hide the seam on the inside as best that I could. Next thing I added was the little loopy loops that are going to basically connect the two halves together. It's basically just the same piece of clay that I used for the sides and then I rolled it up into a little circle cylinder thing. And then this is me just uh, making sure that I can actually line up the pieces properly because I didn't want to put them in the oven and then find out that they don't actually line up. Next thing I did was make the leaves that are going to go on the top half of the star drop box. I just have this little leaf shaped piece of clay and I just put some impressions into it with one of my silicone styluses and then I just sort of like morphed it into the shape I was looking for just like a leaf that curls down basically these proceeded to fall off like 47 times so in the end they look a little better than they do now but you get the idea you'll see it later anyways Next thing I did was add in the floor for the top part of the house. It's basically like the little attic part. And I used one of my tools to depress in these little brick pattern and some like wooden slats for the back part of the wall. For the second floor walls, it's a type of wall design where the top is like wall and then the bottom half of the wall is like wooden slats. So I added an extra piece of clay just to make some dimensional difference between the two types. I added on the second floor floor. <laughs> and this time I was a little smarter because I put the wooden 
design on the piece of clay before I attached it to the actual box shape. And then for the bottom floor, I had to draw in the wooden boards just using one of my tools. For the bottom half of the star drop, it's a sort of like farm layout. So I wanted the grass sections to be above the dirt part. So I put down some thin pieces of clay and I basically squooshed the sides down into these little jagged grassy shapes. And then I used one of my tools to draw in individual little grass blades just to add some nice texture. I ended up using one of my ball styluses to add even more texture. I placed down the little square for the sewer top, I guess you could call it. To make the little leg part, I basically scraped the clay out from the bottom and just smoothed out all the sides. For the two dirt patches, I again used raised pieces of clay that I kind of pushed down with my ball stylus and added some dirt texture. And then I also put nine little indentation places where I'll be putting the vegetables and the rocks later on. For all of the stones, there's a bunch of different sizes. They're all basically the same idea. I used a ball of clay, attached it to the base, and I used one of my tools to kind of square out the shape and make it a little more jagged and rock-like. For the vegetables, I'm fairly certain they're turnips. In the drawing, they have way more leaves than what I put on, but it's actually very hard to make teeny tiny vegetables. So I basically made little balls of clay, put them in each of the holes, and then onto each ball I attached three little leaves. Next thing was to make the nine little various rocks and geodes. And then along the sides of the bottom, I decided to add the same sort of rocky texture that's in the drawing. So I just used one of my ball styluses and did that on all of the edges. I had to make a bunch of trees. They all had the same sort of stem. It was just like a long piece of clay that I drew a bunch of like root lines onto. Uh, this one is a sort of evergreen tree, so it's a cone shape, and then I add a bunch of little clay pellets basically to the side, uh, sort of like roof shingles, I guess. And then at the top, I add some little lines with one of my tools. I wanted all of these to fit nicely into their spots, so I basically just smooshed down some clay and made little like craters for all the trees. I don't want these to be fully attached because whenever I bake them, I want to be able to take them out afterwards whenever I paint everything because I want to be able to paint all sides of the trees and the rocks and such. So I made the shipping box next and also the silo. Next thing to make was a little cow that's at the front. This was extremely difficult because it was so small. Next thing after that was the tiny duck. And then I also made a tiny chicken. Last thing was the scarecrow watching over the garden of vegetables, as well as Krobus by his sewer entrance. For the inside of the house, I made the chimney and fireplace separately, and I basically just fit it into the space that was there. I squished down the inside of the fireplace a little bit more. And then I added the actual fire itself and used one of my ball styluses and some of my pointy tools to add some little flame details. I added in a light sconce, a window to the left of the fireplace. I also added a little frame to the window. I added some wooden logs beside the fireplace as well as some shelving to the left and a little picture frame, some pillows, some carpets, a little table, added a little plant pot. To the bottom floor, I added the little tiny bed, which later on I added a little sleeping cat to it. I made the tiny TV, and then I also made all of the cabinets, the kitchen sink, and the stovetop. Last thing was the big picture frame that goes on top of the TV. After baking everything, I covered it in a nice layer of primer. I only used one layer for this because it took legit 
three hours to prime these somehow. So I only wanted to use a one layer because I'm lazy and I knew it was going to be a lot of work to paint everything. I also took everything out before I primed, but after I baked and primed everything separately. So like the TV, the bed, all the trees, the bushes, that kind of stuff. I wanted to start with painting the outside of the box. So I painted it with this nice purple color. I also painted the top of the box, the same purple. And then later on, I added in some darker purple details, especially in the sort of like circle hole thing in the middle of the star drop. And I also added some highlights just to make it a little more three dimensional. Because I had already made the star drop earrings, this was a lot of muscle memory. I basically did the exact same design that I did for the earrings, including the little yellow highlights around the star drop. Next thing to paint was the leaves of the star drop. I painted them all this really bright permanent green color. It doesn't really show up so much on camera, but I did add a bunch of highlights and lowlights to the leaves, which you'll end up seeing later on at the final reveal. The trees and the bushes were painted in two different kinds of green. This one's a sort of the lighter green. The evergreens ended up being painted a darker green. They all had the same brown trunks. Same with the bushes, some of them were painted this lighter green, and I also added some red berries to some of the bushes. The TV, the bed frame, the stool, and the little table all got the same warm brown color. And I also added the little triple dot decorations to the bed. The bed comforter is a blue and orange striped pattern with a little sort of green folded part and then the cat is really bright orange very cute for small things like this little table i paint over the little card on the table as well as the candle just because it makes it easier to just paint over the brown where there is no seams next thing to paint was the walls of the bottom part of the box they're this sort of orangey brown color that i went over later on with a dark brown wash to fill in the cracks i painted the bottom part this sort of naples yellow uh, right now it looks way brighter than it actually is in person i added the green of the grass added a little darker green wash on the grass as well and I added some lighter brown blobs all over the sandy parts. I painted the rocks a sort of gray color and then went over them later with some lighter gray. Painted the fence boards dark brown. I painted the water with this little water design and painted in the seaweed green. Next thing to do after painting everything was to glue it all down. So I started with the silo, I glued down a bush, the little warp totem. Glued down a little plant bushel, and I glued down all of the different geodes and rocks. Next thing I glued down was the shipping box, as well as the little duck friend. I glued down the cow into the grassy field, and I glued the chicken down pretty close beside the cow. I wasn't really feeling the green that I had painted all of the edges of the box, so I decided to go with the same brown that was used in the original image. I painted the bottom floor wood slats this light green color. The wall behind the wood slats got a sort of like yellowish color. All of the smooth walls were painted with the same light yellow color. The upstairs is all the same sort of grayish brown wood color. And I painted the little anchor the same gray. I recreated the little landscape painting that's seen in the living room. So that's a nice little sky blue with some green grass. And then I also added some sort of, I think they're supposed to be sun rays with some nice light green and some light blue. And I also added a couple clouds to finish it up. I painted the edges of the top box the same warm brown as the bottom part of the box. And 
and then I painted in all of the little pots and jars that were in the cabinets in the community center floor on the second floor and in the kitchen on the main floor. Next thing I painted was the fireplace. I covered it all with this nice reddish orangey brown color. I painted in the cushions and the carpet and then I could start gluing everything in. So I started with the bed with the little kitty cat and then I added in the TV, which later on I covered the screen in some Mod Podge so it was a little more reflective. Same as I did with the windows later on. I added in the little table, the tiny Junimo. I added Lewis's purple pants to the community center floor. And then I finished up the wizard's lair on the top floor. The last thing I have to do is make the plastic screen for the fish aquarium. I want to put actual sand in this, so I used this little takeout container I had and I cut the plastic out into the proper shape and I basically just put some glue on the sides and sort of wedged it in place. I ended up using some clear Mod Podge as sort of caulking on the sides of the fish tank because I didn't want any of the sand to fall out. So I just filled over any cracks with the Mod Podge because I knew it would dry clear. I also filled up the little pond on the bottom part of the box with some clear Mod Podge as well. I had to do this in multiple layers because they wanted it to dry with no bubbles, perfectly clean and clear. So I did that next. Everything got a spray down with the Mr. Super Clear Sealer. After that, I can put the little holding peg between the two pieces of the box, and then we're on to our glamour shots. Thank you so much for watching this video. I know it's been a while since I posted anything. This was probably one of my most difficult and challenging projects ever, because everything was so small. I have pretty small hands to begin with, so I feel like this doesn't really show how small this craft actually is, but it is very small. I'm thinking next week I won't make something so teeny tiny and painful because I did suffer extreme back pain from bending over and looking at this so closely. If you like this video, you should consider pressing the little like button underneath and maybe also subscribing. I would really appreciate it. If you want to go check out my website, I have it linked in the description. And maybe you can go watch some of my other videos. I have a couple more Stardew Valley, a Nintendo themed crafts for your viewing pleasure. And yeah, I'll see you next week or the week after that. Bye.